Uh, here's, here's our first CAT demonstration, uh, reminding you that this is part of, of, of Max CAT, the Technology uh, Applications Assessment Team underneath the shuttle program. And uh, the, the first goal out of all of this is the little blue box at the bottom, which says we're going to, you know, basically get an understanding of humans <coughs> and how they respond to a first partial G in space, because we will get some of that data. And, and we have, we've, we've kind of thought that through and uh, love to show you a different, different time how we're going to accommodate that, even with the space station demo. Next, Matt. Uh, here's the centrifuge demo. You can see when we were kind of hoping to do this. We would like to start out in 2011. Uh, probably not going to happen. We're still under a CR, so uh, we'll just move that around. But the costs actually are uh, um, pretty well uh, thought out at this point. And actually, this is the first where you can see the uh, dynamic uh, uh, ring flywheel there. It's the, uh, it appears as the yellow and the black uh, hashed uh, ring there towards the center of the hub. Next, Max. Uh, right there, you can see some of our calculations that, that we ran through space and life sciences over on the left as far as, as what all our equivalent would be on the wall. Uh, please understand that what we're trying to do here is to just get one of the astronauts in EVA suit into the, uh, the hub. Which we actually have one in the hard section up there, and then we would offload the the uh, the mass down to the uh, to the other hard ring there with uh, with uh, piped in uh, waste uh, liquid from uh, into a bladder and then we'll start start our RPM march up and we'll see how the astronaut starts to respond. Uh, now this is this is this is the first time we'll get data and insight to this. Like I said, space and life science um, it, it encouraged us to to go beyond that and to get uh, into the to higher uh, artificial G. Uh, even to the point instead of lying down to actually be standing with inside there. Uh, that'll be more of an engineering challenge and of course cost more, but um, we'll do whatever the, the people at the bank allow us to do. Um, uh, Marcus Harley, um, is the, the node to which you're attaching, um, pardon my ignorance, isn't, isn't that, uh, on ISS, isn't that designated for one of the regular resupply missions? Right. See, we, we don't know how much time we're going to get. So um, uh, the, the whole the whole aspect here, you can see that SMRMS is there and it's in a birth mode. This thing is designed to be pulled and taken off and put back together again a number of times if, if you want to do that. This is notional. We haven't gone in and, and, and talked to the station guys in length that says, all right, where could we mount this permanently? Okay. Gotcha. That, that's one of the things that we have to do, but we're not going to bother them until we get a little bit more interest in a couple of nods and grunts from folks. Hey, hey, hey Harley. Yeah. I think there's also some discussion of adding another node on the front of station as well. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Great. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of discussions going on on the station right now. Yeah, so we'll find real estate wherever it's there, and and and, and we can we can undock and dock because we're dealing with the orbiter external airlocks. So we've already got that piece of rather critical flight hardware in our in our bag of tricks, and and that's kind of what makes one of these things interesting is that we've already bought and paid for probably um, uh, a, what would normally be a huge uh, uh, cost burden. All right, Max, thanks. Uh, there you can see a couple of the other things. You see a little nut out there, it's called stabilizer ring. Um, one of the things that, and, and that is uh, a notional representation of what we would really do, uh, that, that is of a Hoberman uh, <coughs> type of, of a deployment and um, uh, like I said, you can you can see down in the left hand uh, box there are a bunch of different sites to go to and see some of this work. And I think you'll you'll get a bunch of ahas uh, for space application. And that's uh, that's what we uh, uh, will use to stabilize the ring for the RPM because just an inflatable alone has got a potential of possibly collapsing on itself. Okay, Matt. And there it is, uh, far view. I'm getting real close to. Uh, End of time here. I've only got about a minute, so you can read through what we're looking to uh, to do on that. There's some aspects of it to talk specifically to how we start it up, uh, how we drive it, etc. And um, uh, I guess I'll say, uh, do we have one more? Yeah, that's the best one. That's a really neat uh, 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 one that uh, uh, Jack and his folks uh, had provided us, and so you get a you get a good understanding what the overall uh, mass of uh, 
of the Central Future Duty Station. The good news is the station is still bigger, so uh, the dog still gets to wag the tail. And uh, from what we can understand, actually, any of the of the torques that would come off of this might offload some of the CMG clusters in one axis, so you might actually get a benefit on station from this. And and uh, we we do have a, a rather clever way of, of going into a soft birth mode so that we wouldn't have any kind of perturbation to any of the micro G experimentation on board. And I, I encourage you to take a look at some of the backup charts that at your leisure, and uh, if you have any questions, we'd only be too happy to accommodate you, and I think I made it by three o'clock. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, or, or we say here uh, at, at Goddard, you made it by four o'clock. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very good. Well, I got, actually, I got a number of questions. I, I st had to step away to, to handle one of these, uh, one of the technical glitches that we had. So I may have missed the following. Do you have, or could you point to me in, in your charts, um, packing for, for the space station module, not for the whole, not for the whole Nautilus, um, packing um, diagrams or calculations or designs uh, for whatever vehicle it's, it's going to take it. Uh, actually, that that's on. Uh, I've been working on that on how you fit into the into the fairings. I don't have that. What you're talking about is deploying the the, the diet that uh, centrifuge demo is what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and uh, you have to be clever with that. Actually, you use the in, some of the internal volume of the of the external airlock is, is part of the the cradle area that you're going to have for deploying of the. Uh, of the ring, and it, it's all pretty much uh, autonomous. Uh, you don't see all of the design evidence in the renderings that you have here, but we have there. And actually, over the uh, winter and Christmas holidays, we we built a, um, a very crude uh, ring, um, dynamic ring flywheel uh, with the uh, moving masses uh, that we've, uh, and uh, actually uh, we used uh, a laser pointer and oscilloscope and some nifty strain gauges and doggone it, if it doesn't look like it might actually work. So uh, we we have uh, an idea there to really balance it out. Now, if you were really going to design this thing and you didn't and you weren't worried about you know uh, a sticker shock too much, uh, you would say, well, of course, I'd use a counter rotating um, centrifuge of equal mass, and that would be the best thing to go up there and do, and, and that might be the ultimate Nautilus design. See, one of the one of the things that you have to understand with this is that this is supposed to be a learning vehicle, just like Nautilus was for the United States Navy in the new power program. We don't have to necessarily get it all right. It doesn't have to be completely perfect. We may just build one of these, and then we'll know how to build a really big one that goes to Mars. And Matt, go to the last uh, chart. If you go to the last two charts in the backup, you'll see what the one that could maybe go to keep going more and more. None more. There it is. And that's, that's the quick version that's going to go to Mars and actually has accommodations in the little hexagonal honeycomb sections for your, your descent craft and what have you. And, and of course, you can't see the huge uh, space electro, you know, electronic propulsion and chemical rocket engines in the back because they ran out of room. But that, that just shows you that you know, you're going you're gonna to need a lot of logistical support to go somewhere if you're in a journey class vehicle for pure exploration. And that's what this allows you to go do. Yeah, actually, it, uh, you know, this, this isn't the point of your of, of your talk, but does that look like nuclear thermal propulsion uh, uh, on that second to the last diagram? Um, well, I'll, I'm not going to say where I got it, um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's up to the propulsion guys. And, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's the beauty of good systems engineering within NASA as a whole is you will figure out the right propulsion. Um, and, and vehicle marriage uh, for the specific mission that you're going to go off and do. So hey, Har hey Harley.